Hello everybody, Luke Schulte, Field of Grounds for Bex Hybrids. As you know, the last 10 to 12 days have been incredibly hot. And unfortunately, July doesn't look to provide us a lot of relief or a lot of reprieve either. Weather prognosticators are anticipating July is gonna be a very warm month, above average, maybe even well above average. How will the anticipated heat affect the critical growth stage of pollination? The fungicides have been advocated for a long time that they provide other benefits beyond just fighting disease, what we call plant health benefits. But one of the most significant plant health benefits is the reduction to ethylene production or the reduction in respiration rates. And the analogy I like to use is it's kind of like flipping the air conditioner on. Just like humans, we can sleep at night without the air conditioner on, but we don't amount to as much the following day. When we use fungicides that contain, say, estrobilurin or SDHI, which are the, the basis for most of the premixes out there, it's essentially like turning the air conditioner on. And the plant can relax at night. It's particularly important as we have these really warm, nighttime lows. Pollination occurs rather quickly, but it occurs much quicker in hot years. It occurs over the course of about 100 to 110 heat units. So if you think about those really hot years when you're getting 25, 30 heat units in a day, that's over the course of three plus or three and a half days. But in those years where we have more moderate temperatures throughout pollination, that can be as long as five, five and a half, last year in some cases, six days. That's substantial. You know, we've known about the plant health benefits to fungicides for a long time, but up until now, they've been very difficult to prove until you see these pictures. A couple years ago, we were happened to be walking our fungicide rate and timing study, and we happened to be out there about three days after Tyler had applied the Veltima fungicide application. And because of the circumstances, he ended up applying it right at VT. There actually hadn't had been any pollen that it shed. He had intended to apply it at R1, but because of the circumstances and the weather, it got applied at VT. And now you can see the effects of lowering that respiration rate and allowing that pollination window to be much broader or much wider. If you focus on the tassel of the Veltima treated corn, you can see there's a lot of anthers, probably 40, 50% of those anthers are still clinging to the tassel. Whereas the untreated corn, maybe 10, 20% of the anthers that contain the pollen are still clinging to the tassel, meaning pollination on the untreated is near in the end while we're only mid middle of the pollination window for the Veltima treated corn. This is substantial. We expect we got probably a day and a half additional time frame in order to pollinate the corn in the Veltima treatments versus the untreated corn. There's the proof we were looking for that, in fact, these fungicides do provide other benefits, namely reducing that respiration rate. Now, how does that apply to 2024? We're anticipating a very warm July, which is really going to compress that pollination window. We may need to think about shifting our fungicide timing. R1 has been proven, it's consistent, but given the fact that we anticipate a lot of heat for the month of July, we might wanna actually shift that up a little bit and reduce that stress load to the plant to widen that application window instead of it being three, three and a half days when we have a lot of heat. But a couple things to keep in mind if you're gonna apply a fungicide at VT before pollen shed and earlier is early is good, too early is not necessarily good. We want to apply that somewhere in that neighborhood of four to five days prior to it starting to shed pollen or prior to that full VT. If we apply it even earlier than that, we really expect that's going to diminish the plant health or the reduction in respiration rates as we get further in front of tassel. Secondly, we're out in front of tasseling. We have to be mindful the end of the year isn't actually determined to about a week ahead of the tassel showing. So we want to be mindful of any adjuvants we use, make sure they don't contain NP. Your retailer, your chemical supplier will know what I mean by that term. And then lastly, since we're shifting that pollen or that fungicide timing up, if tar spot becomes a problem, which it's usually more problematic later in the growing season, there may be situations where a second application is either justified or warrant or necessary if tar spot becomes a problem. And this adjustment to timing is much more applicable or just much more pragmatic if you think about the number of machines that have been bought, but more namely, the effectiveness we've seen out of drone applications the last two years. So just some things to consider as we start to head into what we anticipate to be a very warm July. And like always with farming every year, there's a new set of circumstances and new challenges. I'd encourage you to consider shifting your fungicide timing slightly earlier. I'd expect the benefits to be well worth it. As always, if you have any questions around this topic or any other, give us a call. Thanks for tuning in.